Steven Jackson. KD posted the following to his Instagram story. Stop sliding in my DMs telling me how to hoop. You're trash. Have a nice day. Various emoji, emoji, emoji. L listen, KD. I, I, got, I got a solution for you, man. Don't have open DMs. Oh, there might be a benefit to having open DMs. Well, then I guess this is part. This is what comes with the territory. Now, I don't have an Instagram, so I don't know about the open or closed DMs. I also have me. So I'm just saying, like, go ahead. What? Jack screwed uh, me yeah. on the, uh, sliding into the DM. What, what does that mean? For me, I'm, that's a little foreign to me. Well, that is a different situation. Like, <laughs> that, that's, a situation. Let, that's not the good sliding into no, the DMs. No, sliding in your DMs, talking about, talking about his game. This is the best player in the world. Whoever sent that DM, you're an idiot. Okay, point blank. Yes. But sliding DMs is good sometimes. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? When you're trying to make a connection. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, we're trying to make a connection. Worldly connection. Yeah, it's good. Bring the world closer together. Yes, exactly. But KD, you know you're great. Sometimes some things you can't respond to. I'm just happy it's from your page and not the private page. Not the <laughs> page. Okay, thank you, thank you. I, like, we get it. You already know how to play basketball. Let's just leave everything that. to everyone. Mm. Yes. All right, moving on to LeBron James. He's been long rumored to be considering joining the Lakers next season. LeBron's associates were seen with Magic Johnson during the Cavs' loss to the Lakers. Stephen, are the Lakers a good fit for LeBron James? I know we're going to talk about this. There's a lot over the course of the next And I'll let you slide on that comment there. Now we're going to talk about the actual best player in the world. Okay, the actual best player in the world. Yeah. Well, KD was the best player in the world last year. Okay. He showed it in the finals. Okay. But, but now LeBron is definitely the best player in the world. But... You can, you know what I say, one size fits all? Yes. This is this situation with LeBron. He fits anywhere. Every team, we said it yesterday, team. church league, YMCA, uh, <laughs> LA Fitness, anywhere. Mm -hmm. He fits with anybody. Hold on, LA Fitness? LA Fitness. Just yeah, yeah, sure. it's going down in LA Fitness so you now. think he's not going to be first pick at LA Fitness? <laughs> <laughs> he's first pick at LA Fitness for sure. <laughs> he will fit anywhere. I think the only thing with LA is LA. He can sell himself even more. You know, he's going to make so much money off the court if, like he does already. I think L.A. is great, but anywhere is great for LeBron. It doesn't matter where he goes. So we know that. I like San Antonio. There's, you like San Antonio. Yes. Well, I haven't heard people talk about that. I lately. like San Antonio. How come? Because he's never played with a, a coach like Greg Popovich. I think he's never played with a, a great defender like cool. like uh, Cole Leonard. And the way the, uh, the Marcus Ard is playing right now, I think – Powell can help them. The team they have with, 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 with Popovich at, at, at the helm, I think LeBron will be great there. So here's the thing. The, uh, and he'll I mean, have a chance to catch Mike there. Oh, three more rings. Ooh. Okay. So because here's the it, it, critical point about the Lakers. It, we, I, I listened to the broadcast when the Cavs were playing the Lakers, and I know Julius Randle's having the best game of his life. And God, like, I'm happy for him because he was a guy, his first couple of years, people were questioning his maturity, his work ethic, yeah. and he's, he's starting to earn that draft status. Like, so good for him. But the... The announcing crew was discussing, given what the Lakers have with this young talent, would they want to blow it up for LeBron? Yes, they'd want to blow it up for mm -hmm. LeBron. Every team in the league outside of Golden State, potentially, right. would remake their entire roster to add LeBron, even year 16 LeBron. So the question isn't, would, the, would LeBron be a good fit for the Lakers? But would the Lakers be a good fit for LeBron? When you look at, we just talked about Houston, how good they are this year, how good we think they'll be next year, how good Golden State's going to continue to be. Do you think LeBron plus, it would be Lonzo, Brandon Ingram, even if they got one other guy, Paul George or Boogie Cousins, one of those guys, do you think that's a championship level team? How not? You put LeBron with Boogie, you put LeBron with Paul George and those young guys, I definitely like it. I, def I, I, I think they can win for sure. Having Magic, uh, Magic Johnson, you know, running things, a guy that knows what it takes to win a championship, that's been there, that's played the game, I like everything about it. Stephen, what do you think is the most important factor that LeBron is considering with regards to where he's going to end up next year? Is it championships? Is it I want to enjoy myself? Do I want to stay on the East Coast? Is it close to home? Like, what, what's the one thing that, that he's chasing? Well, I know in, I've, I'm not LeBron, so his decision is always different. You know, you have to be in the shoes, but everything has to be beneficial at this point. You know, uh, he's going to make the money. I don't think that's what, what he's thinking. I think the far, as far as being in a position where he can win, being in a position where uh, he's not going to be in, on a team that's the next four years, he's under 500, not making the playoffs, a uh, situation where he's, he's, he's still close to his kids, where his kids are in a great school. All that matters, but I think he don't want to be in a situation where he's losing. He want to continue to chase Mike. He wants to continue to, to make guys better, and he want to be with an organization that, that's a championship organization. I think first, first things first, if Magic Johnson is trying to talk to me 
and I'm in the basketball business, I got to talk to him. Right. I believe it's irresponsible for Maverick Carter, one of his boys, and um, Rich, Rich Paul, his advisor, agent, whatever you want to see, the relationship that they have. It's irresponsible if you don't talk to Magic. Right. Given that LeBron is a historian of the game, you know he has respect not only for what Magic's done on the court, but for off, off the court. The court. He's got to keep Houston and Golden State in his sights, though. So he can't make this decision absent of knowing who is the competition. So does he want to be in the West, which I believe that the Lakers, they will be a part of it. I don't believe the Lakers are the best fit for him. I believe San Antonio and then Houston and then coming back East, Philadelphia and Cleveland in that order are the best fits for LeBron. But LeBron can go anywhere. His brand is global. So it's not going to matter if it's in Akron, Ohio, or if it's in Philadelphia, um, PA. So that part, the championships to me becomes paramount. Nick and I are in opposition as far as this. I'm not into getting to the finals and losing. Not at all. Five losses in the finals is enough for me. So I know you're all you're above Michael Jordan in the numbers, but that championship number, given that, a, that if you are the best basketball player in the world, how you can dominate the court compared to, compared to other sports like baseball and football, where you are not as responsible for winning championships, yeah. to me, he has lost enough. And I believe it's going to be impossible if he any more losses in the finals in passing Michael Jordan as the greatest basketball Steven, player. Steven, he's ever. lost enough. He's a loser. Okay, <laughs> LeBron James is a loser. Let's just agree. He <laughs> lost enough. You're right about that. You, so you, you mentioned the losing in the finals. So Chris and I are just diametrically opposed on this. I think every round of the playoffs you win is an accomplishment. I will, I will never believe it would be better to lose in the Eastern Conference semifinals than to win that series and then lose in the NBA finals. But... Most people do count finals losses. They don't count playoff losses. They count finals losses. If that's the case, if that's true, then going west is to his benefit. Because you might not make the finals, but if you do make the finals, you're going to win the damn thing. Yes. You know what I mean? Like going west and having that tougher gauntlet where at least if you don't make the finals, you're not going to get one of those finals losses. Like if that's how he does the math. Then going west, whether that be San Antonio, L.A., or Houston, we know Houston is a high, or is a big possibility for him. All those make sense, Paul. right? Because of Chris Paul, because of his. When you say because of Chris Paul, do you mean because of their relationship or because of the basketball acumen? Well, both. I mean, mm -hmm. me and Chris Paul are not as close as him and LeBron, but I always wanted to play with Chris Paul. Everybody wants to play with Chris Paul. He's he's just one of the smartest points guard, point guards of all time. He cares about the game and he cares about making players better. You don't have too many old school point guards like him and Rondo in the league no more. You got to take advantage of those guys. Uh, Stephen, what happens to LeBron's <laughs> legacy if he now leaves Cleveland for you know a again for a sec third time? Nothing. No, <laughs> nothing happens. He already nothing. delivered. He is LeBron James. He, he his legacy is set in stone already. Where he where he's going to finish? That's still up. That's still we have to see that where his stats going to be and where he's going to finish as far as uh, his numbers in the game, but. Him as a legend, as a mogul, as an all-star, as, as one of the best ever, is written in stone. And nothing he can do to change that. You said yesterday that you wouldn't be surprised if this Cleveland team doesn't make it out of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Mm -hmm. This Cleveland team roster-wise, with the exception of that Brooklyn pick, and maybe they'll hit the lottery with that, literally, but is basically set in stone. Like when you trade for Jordan Clarks and you trade for Rodney Hood, like this mm -hmm. is going to be that team moving forward for the next few years, barring a major trade. Aside from them winning a title, do you see any way he stays in Cleveland after this contract? If they don't win, no. No, I, th I think winning is the only thing that keeps him there. Like I say, he's chasing Mike. And, and this team, like we said, we, they're, they're not really can't get too much better. You know, um, the, the teams they got to play with against Toronto and, and Boston, they're not scared of Cleveland no more. Cleveland's not scared. They're not a scary team to go up against. So if he doesn't win this year, it's a good chance he's leaving. All right. Steven, you're great, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, Appreciate you, having Thank you man. man. Love to be here. First, Take a little don't break. Be sliding Thanks off again for everything. DMs. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that today. Whatever that means. Coming up, no would Drew Brees make the Vikings the best team in the NFL? It's next on First Things First. Speaking of DMs, Instagram, can we get my man's page back? Come on, y'all. Come on. My fans looking for me. I know they're going crazy. They, they snatched his page or something. Kidnapped. It's Ram Truck.